Francis Ngannou signed to the PFL. So what now? Francis Ngannou has finally dropped the announcement we've all been waiting for with his announcement of his signing to the PFL. This comes after months of uncertainty and criticism for Francis after his leaving from the UFC with many, including myself, saying that he fumbled the bag. For those who don't know, I'll quickly get you up to speed. Back in January of this year, Francis Ngani was reportedly offered an $8 million contract and in the words of Dana White, the biggest heavyweight contract in UFC history. This would have also included a super fight with John Jones, which would have easily raked in over a million pay-per-view buys. Despite this, Francis Ngannou did not resign his contract, citing that it wasn't just about money, but it was instead because of a whole slew of other reasons. A couple of these reasons included his demands for better fighters' rights, including health insurance for all fighters not being met. He also couldn't escape the champ clause, which is a clause that re-signs champions to the UFC right after they defend their belt. And finally, he could not get a guarantee from the UFC that they would help or even allow Francis Ngannou to have a boxing match outside of the promotion. So with those reasons, Francis would leave the promotion, but with nothing really lined up afterwards. Even though Francis was big on getting a super fight against Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder and their reports that they were meeting, I don't think anything actually materialized from these meetings. Outside of the boxing world, the CEO of One Championship also reported that Francis Ngannou and him were not aligned on non-financial terms, and because of this, the talks were off. The CEO of One said on Twitter that an unconfirmed $20 million for two fights was going to be planned, but when Francis was asking for way too much demands that were unrelated to money, the deal was off. Knowing what we know now, Francis was probably asking for a lot of influence in the promotion, and like Dana, the CEO of One probably tried to trade these demands for more money instead. Also at Bare Knuckle, a deal fell through when Francis was just simply asking for way too much money. With all this news about Francis asking for way too much money and no real boxing deal being made, many fans thought that Francis had fumbled the bag with the UFC and in hindsight, a super fight with John Jones and $8 million didn't seem that bad. Well, here we are now. Francis signed a huge deal with the PFL and proved everybody wrong. So finally, let's get into the major point of the deal. Firstly, let's talk about money. Francis is going to make a high seven-figure contract, meaning he's going to be in the ballpark of just under $10 million for the next two or three fights. This is obviously great for Francis as he stepped away from similar money in the UFC and is probably going to make around $8 million. And what's also pretty crazy is that Francis was able to negotiate a guarantee for his opponent to make $2 million. He will also be able to get sponsors unlike fighters in the UFC after the Reebok deal. And finally, Francis will be fighting in the super fight division in the PFL, which is more similar to boxing in its revenue split. Fighters will share 50% of the revenue instead of the UFC's usual 16 to 20%. So all in all, Francis proved us wrong in terms of money. Another big one is that the PFL will allow Francis to box, so the door is still open for a super fight against Deontay Wilder or Tyson Fury. But besides the money, Francis was able to gain a lot of power and influence in the MMA world. Francis in this deal was also able to negotiate a spot on the PFL's Global Athlete Advisory Board, which means he has a say on how the PFL expands globally, a say on the recruitment process, and overall is a representative of fighters for the PFL. Additionally, Francis is an equity owner and chairman of the new PFL Africa League, essentially a minor league within the PFL where the champions there can move on to fight on the PFL global scale. In summary, I do think Francis really did get everything he wanted and proved most of us wrong. So the whole time we've been talking about Francis and how this move is good for him, but how does this affect the PFL? Well, obviously this is by far the biggest signing in their history and probably of all combat sports. Taking the UFC's former heavyweight champion at his height and giving him practically everything he asked for is a huge move, but equally a huge risk. See, they gave Francis by far the most money out of all of their fighters. For example, Anthony Pettis, who was the highest PFL earner before Francis, was only making $750,000. Famously, the prize to win the entire PFL tournament is $1 million. So for Francis to possibly be making somewhere around seven, eight, or nine times the prize of the entire tournament, guaranteed is insane. Now, I don't know how much the PFL made last year. This estimation that I found online says they make around $22 million a year, meaning Francis's $8 million-ish would be about 36% or over one third of the revenue. The real number could be more or less, but I'm sure that Francis will be getting paid a really good portion of the total revenue. Now I know the vast majority of the PFL's funds are not coming from strictly revenue right now, 
given that the PFL is one of the fastest growing MMA promotions and in general is just really brand new, a majority of their money currently is coming from investors and not quite ticket sales and pay-per-view buys. Several big time investors include Alex Rodriguez, Ray Lewis, and Wiz Khalifa. They're all banking on the PFL being the next big thing. But if my one business class in college taught me anything, it's that the growth stage of a company's life cycle is by far the most important stage and can make or break a company. So like I said before, since a majority of the PFL's cash right now is coming from investors and unlike revenue isn't guaranteed to come every year, they need to use this capital correctly in order to generate more annual revenue and become self-sustainable. Going back to the PFL, right now they're probably doing less than 100,000 pay-per-view buys. The first PFL pay-per-view event was met with a lot of criticism because the pay-per-view buy rate was set at $49.99, which is much lower than the UFC, but fans still reacted very negatively to the price. After the event, when asked about the success of the pay-per-view, the president of the PFL said that everybody was happy with it, you've got to start somewhere, and we were happy with the outcome of the whole show. ESPN was truly happy with the show, so if they're happy, we're happy which sounds like they did terrible on pay-per-view buys because if they had actually done well, they would have actually revealed the numbers and not said the stuff about ESPN being happy and quote, you've got to start somewhere. So with the PFL doing a fraction of the pay-per-view buys the UFC is doing and the majority of the investment money going into Francis, they are really hoping that he results in an increase in pay-per-view buys. But the thing is, who does he fight to get the pay-per-view buys? If we look at the current heavyweight PFL champ, Ante Dilia, who has a third nipple by the way, he lost to a guy named Bruno Capaloza, who is pretty small for the weight class at 6'2", 240, and Capaloza himself has lost to Yuri Prohaska back at 205. So considering Francis Ngannou probably walks through both of these guys with the current PFL heavyweight roster, I really see no one giving Francis a challenge or even a good fight which is why I heavily question if Francis will bring enough pay-per-view buys for this acquisition to be successful. But enough of the negativity and risk, why is this potentially a good move for the PFL? Well, first and foremost, the PFL finally has a superstar that a lot of even casual MMA fans know of. Before, the biggest stars in the PFL were Anthony Pettis, a former UFC lightweight champ, way past his prime, and Kayla Harrison, who was an Olympic gold medalist in judo, both of which, if we're being honest, weren't the biggest draws in the MMA world. And I know the PFL just signed Jake Paul, who helped create the super fight division, but he isn't really a draw for the PFL as he hasn't fought in the promotion yet. So with the acquisition of Francis, they're for sure going to increase their pay-per-view numbers, even if his fights are going to be not necessarily competitive or a super fight. Secondly, this move is incredibly important for the PFL and the MMA community in a long-term big picture scale. The UFC has always been the premier MMA organization and has easily been the largest MMA organization in the world and that really hasn't been challenged. Bellator keeps on trying but they have truly never challenged the UFC for the throne. 1FC has captured the Eastern Hemisphere, but they aren't really challenging the UFC, more so just expanding their niche as the premier striking organization that Muay Thai and Asian martial artists can go to. This move by Francis and the PFL proves that UFC fighters have legitimate leverage now. It has always been hard for UFC fighters to fight for better pay because there really isn't any better option or competition. But now Francis proved that not only can he leave the UFC and get the same if not more money, he can also get things like sponsorships, 50% of the revenue of pay-per-view events, and also positions of influence within the organization, something the UFC does not offer. And speaking of those types of positions, now that Francis is on the Global Athletic Advisory Board, he'll probably have a lot of influence in trying to recruit UFC fighters. He can relate with UFC fighters who aren't receiving good pay or good treatment from Dana and convince them to jump ship. This legitimate competition and potential of fighters leaving the UFC for the PFL for better compensation can set change in how Dana treats his fighters which could finally topple the long-standing powerhouse that is the UFC. So in conclusion, Francis did get his money but this is a huge risk for the PFL and success is not necessarily guaranteed. However, if this does work out long term, this could shift the power of the MMA world from the UFC to actual legitimate competitor promotions like the PFL. So what do you guys think? Will this move from Francis and the PFL actually destroy the UFC and succeed? 
or will it fail because Francis no longer can draw in those pay-per-view buys? I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. I legitimately don't know where this move is going to go to. Only time will tell. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next week. Peace.